favorite movies you missed season two i'm so excited to to get this started we can't wait to get back we've got the crew here from last year riley jason daniel and cat have all returned and uh, we are excited to to get back at it welcome back everybody hey thank you for having me hey See, the enthusiasm is bubbling over. Everybody's fired up. They're ready to go. Uh, we made a few changes. If you uh, watched Movies You Missed Season 1, we made a few changes this year to keep things a little simpler. Instead of the competition, we wanted it to feel a little more personal. So what we're going to do this year is everybody is going to try to pick their own film uh, that matters to them. Everybody's going to get a turn to pick their own film, and they cannot have more than two people within the group uh, have seen it other than themselves. Um, and and it, the idea is that each person will bring a film that we'll all watch, and then we'll just discuss it afterwards. So I think this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about this week. So this week I got to start us off, and it was great. I was really excited about the opportunity, and I presented to them the social network uh directed by david fincher and based on the book the accidental billionaire uh, the social network takes us back to 2003 when harvard undergrad and computer genius mark zuckerberg begins to work on a new concept that eventually turns into the global social network known as facebook six years later he's one of the youngest billionaires ever but zuckerberg finds that his unprecedented unprecedented success leads to both personal and legal complications when he ends up on the receiving end of two lawsuits. Um, as always, this podcast is rated S for spoilers. So the reason I picked the social network that I wanted to show everybody here uh, is because coming out in 2010, I thought that this particular film captured a moment in our culture better than many, many films uh, that I've seen in the last two decades. It really captures the spirit and vitality and uh, and the controversies of our era. Now, again, we were talking about this last night. Um, if the film were made now, I'm sure it would be very, very different. Um, but there was something about this film which I just thought was so magical in the sense of its importance, its cultural relevance, um and the conversations that it takes around social networking the way we connect to one another um and i just thought it was really really well made it has a great script uh an amazing cast and uh, that was why i wanted to share it with you all so why don't you tell me though what did you think of the social network i i really liked it actually um i i cannot say that i have really been a fan of um mr mark mr mark zucky um i i can't say i'm his his biggest supporter necessarily but um the one thing that i did like about this film was that um it it didn't try and make me his supporter and i think i mentioned that last night uh when we watched it is that um they, they sort of they, they uh made sure to sort of portray um mark as like granted the genius that he is in terms of coding and um uh building that sort of network that he knows that people will want to come back to but also showing how like in terms of like an actual personable social person like as many people said throughout the film he was kind of an asshole to everyone and it sort of started out like that in the first bar scene with um his girlfriend at the time um with what was the line when he said that he, he would introduce her to people that she wouldn't get the chance to meet um and ended that way with um i i think the line that did it for me right at the end was when he was in the loss uh, when he was sitting in the lawsuit and he was saying that you know he and his colleagues were doing things that no one in that room were intellectually capable of ever doing um just sort of showing that you know like throughout all of this he still sort of saw himself as 
the best in the room at any point in time. And I kind of like that because a lot of movies will try and get you to like a main character, whether you like them or not. Um, but yeah, it was really good. And it, it was, it, I, I agree with what you said about the time that it came out and the fact that what you say Facebook had been out for two, three years prior, four? Well, I think, it, well, by the time it came out, it was 2010. So it probably, and I think it started in 2003. So I'm guessing it probably went viral four or five years or maybe four years earlier. Yeah. Facebook so I, was still hot at the time. Yeah. It was still pretty hot. Yeah. And, and I think it's also interesting to sort of look at how, not, not how even in sort of, I'm going to say even in that time, even though like, you know, it wasn't all too long ago, but in terms of like a social media age, it was, um, that the way that Mark and the people he was working with got people hooked on Facebook was, is, hasn't really changed. Like the sort of inherent features of social media of the, the, the fast stimulus that makes people come back hasn't changed at all. And I think that was really interesting to look at as well. So I really liked it. Cool. Yeah, I, I want to get I want to get into that. I want to like, do, but I want to hear from the others first because I think uh, I'm really interested to hear what you guys thought of of how it's changed. But what did what did the rest of you think? It's restored my faith in the male race. <laughs> <laughs> Men are the best. I mean, it was a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. It was a good movie, and I agree with Riley. Like, they don't make you try to like like him or give him any likability because he has none throughout the entire movie. He, I feel like he's just an entitled brat, and continues to be so. Right, like he stepped on everyone he needed to they, people didn't mean anything to him and not even the fact that he was like pining over his girlfriend at the end like he doesn't care he just he's an idiot and it just shows today still to you he doesn't care what he does or who he hurts or what laws he breaks he can go through a lawsuit and facebook will keep going i hate him <laughs> I, I dislike him greatly and the movie just showed like from his beginnings he's been the same person and there's been no change in him I feel like not that I know him personally but he's just yeah well this isn't actually Mark Zuckerberg it's a characterization of him uh but like mm -hmm. that stuff like that website to rape the girl that was, that was him he did that he did do life. that and then yeah like based on his life and then like what like two years ago he was in congress for spying on people for their webcams and listening on them exactly like, targeted hmm. ads yeah buying up instagram and everything else it's like he's I'm, the same person he was at the beginning Buying up There's Instagram no is different than spying on people through their webcams <laughs> but hold i'm on, saying like he's on, just <laughs> he's just accumulating and he yeah he's blatant about how yeah we want information we, and the way that employees are treated at his like at facebook and all of that and his work to the bone and then thrown out i have zero respect for him as a person <laughs> okay i mean whatever like Nobody's perfect, but he was he was a jerk from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but I have no respect for him whatsoever. <laughs> but I mean, he's, he's nobody's perfect. But you know what I mean? Like, what redeeming qualities does this person have? Oh, I want to talk about that. Oh, I'm asking you then, what redeeming qualities does this I, person I, have? I, I see I'm, think, I'm not saying there was any redeeming qualities. I'm saying that I feel bad for him at the end. I, I genuinely feel bad for him at the end of the film. Well, you're wrong. Because <laughs> right? he was pining over the women that he humiliated and used and then refused to really even apologize to? Because, yes. Because it shows, <laughs> it shows a genuine lack of understanding of how to connect with a human person. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a narcissistic person that's what narcissists do 
He's lonely. Well, that's what they say before psychopaths kill everyone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my but but come he was, on. He was just misunderstood. I'm not saying he's misunderstood. I, he, he was having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes is one bad day, said the Joker. Um, no, I mean, but doesn't that speak to the way that we use social? Like, honestly, like this is like uh, now, May, again, this film's 10 years old, which sounds crazy to me at this point that it actually is like out of date. Um, because again, it captures that moment so well. But he was so obsessed to building an empire that he he sort of loses his soul along the way. Did he have one? Never. Even in the beginning, he didn't have one. That's what I was going to ask. Did he even have one to start? With I, his girlfriend, he had no no billion dollar business, but he was still a jerk. I think all all of us have had a date that went that way, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> What has your dating life been like? <laughs> not kidding to that. Um, but uh, but uh, okay. I, I honestly, I will come back to. But I want to hear from the other two, Jason, Daniel. What do you think? Um, well, I thought it was really good. Acting was really well done, um, especially Andrew Garfield. And then, he got nominated. I yeah. believe. Um, and then. I guess it is dramatized, but a lot of what happened actually did happen. And they tried to include as many people as possible uh, from like the makings of Facebook. Even like the way they portrayed Sean Parker was apparently very accurate to how he was. So in that aspect, it, it kind of feels like a doc in some ways, which is really nice. Um, and I guess it's what you want, right? When you think of the social network. Um, but no, overall story was really good. It, it is limiting because it is based off what what happened, but they did add things like a girlfriend and whatnot. But I don't know. I think Riley hit it on the head already, like everything he did about the movie. Um, it's hard though, because watching it now, like knowing all the stuff Mark Zuckerberg has done con to continue being a bad guy mm. is like, kind of make like throughout the whole movie we were dissing it and I think for a good reason because he's an awful guy <laughs> um but yeah I'm, I'm just rambling now no no it's it's fair it's a fair point the last decade of Facebook information has not made him into a hero let's put it that way um it's done quite the opposite you're you're absolutely right uh in that statement um yeah, it's a it's a good point. Daniel, what'd you think? Um, so I went into this uh, having not seen it. Um, I had heard about it and like have heard people talk about it, so I kind of knew, you know, kind of some things about how it was going to go and whatever. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I did not enjoy you know what exactly was happening um but like you know i think the the cast did a good job like the acting was done really well i think the writing was done well um so i, I in that sense i think the movie was was good um but yeah kind of like agreeing with jt like knowing what i know now about mark zuckerberg like i you know, there wasn't any sort of sympathy from my end. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think, like, if I had watched this, I mean, I guess when it first came out, like, I was only 10 years old. But, like, if I was, you know, almost 22 when it came out, I don't know, maybe I would have had a different thought process because I might have been like, oh, well, you know, he hasn't done the stuff that he's done between 2010 and and now uh i will say though and this might be like uh hot tea or something 
But like, I don't really understand why he was being sued because I think technically, like legally, if he didn't take their coding, is it really illegal what he did? It is. Like, yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's like someone saying, hey, I have this great idea for, like, like let's say 10 years ago, I have this great idea that someone will pick you up through an app and the users can just log in. It can be anyone and it's Uber. But I didn't make any of the code. The IP behind it is still like mine. Uh, and then another thing too, uh, the emails is a big fact, like proving it with their case. Cause he was leading them on. Like there was a history of him leading them on and saying, hey, I got the project. I just got to keep working on it. Um, I can't see you guys, but I'm working on it. Uh, but I will see you guys. Like he's obviously leading them on. For the yeah. um, if they didn't have that though, I think Zuckerberg could have got away with like not giving them anything though. Okay. Yeah, cause I was like, oh. no, no, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, like, yeah, because I was just kind of sitting there and I was like, yeah, what he's doing is, like, morally and, like, ethically wrong. But I was like, is this technically, like, legally wrong? Especially, like, I, I don't really get why um, Wardo's character was suing him. Um, so that I didn't fully really understand. So Wardo's was, different than the Winklevosses. Uh, he, he was getting tricked. But like, keep in mind, law is like not black and white. Like a judge has to, it's gray. And like, even with a Wardo, even though what they were doing was technically legal, like it was gray. They were tricking him and he was signing it, not knowing. But his uh, his ownership was 34, was it 34% or something? Yeah. And yeah. got diluted. Like they took Facebook and added it to a new company and by the transfer of shares, they completely diluted his percentage of the company uh, from 30%, which is like now that would be like, what is that? Like over, oh my God, it's like $150 billion right now. Uh, but they diluted it to 30 to 0 0.003 or something, like extremely low. And yeah. they, they tricked them into signing those papers. And nobody but, else got their shares diluted. But was it technically tricking, though? He just wasn't reading through the contracts. Yeah, I, I guess you could say, oh, he just didn't read. Um, but it was, I mean, he did have a case. Like, it was very misleading. Uh, yeah. What they did. That's like saying, hey, buddy, just sign this, and then we'll go on with our day. And then you're signing away your entire ownership. Like, even though you didn't read it, it's your fault. That's like saying, you know how those like uh, those apps and stuff that like you have to agree to the terms and conditions for every mm -hmm. single app. Like who reads it, right? Like you be signing away so much privacy, which is actually what we've been doing for many many years. Like they now they have to ask, can this app track your uh, whatever you do, your activity? Yeah. Um, but is, is it really our fault? Um, I don't think so. And obviously the court decided not because they have to add that part now. Um, but I don't know, I guess it's gray. Like you could say, oh, it's his fault because he was too dumb and didn't read it. But they definitely like, their goal was to trick him into signing it, right? Well, and, and the legal, this, you know, the, the most telling moment of that, of that confrontation, the final confrontation, is when he says, I thought they were my lawyers. Like, to me, that's total conflict of interest, right? It's like, okay, well, the lawyer, the, the lawyers were his lawyers, but now they're not his lawyers and he doesn't know they're not his lawyers. Like, it's all, like, it's so complicated, these little yays and nays. They, they totally screwed him, is really what the point is. I feel like he has a far greater case than the Winklevosses, although the Winkle, Winklevosses could argue, like you said, there's tons of emails of him saying, hey, that's a great idea. I'm just going to do my own thing with it. Yeah, the whole intellectual theft of the whole thing, which is a whole other gray area, but can be made into a case. Yeah, and they made their they made some money off of it and they, and it went away.
uh, but uh, uh, Eduardo Eduardo is still has the title of co-founder of Facebook, um, or at least he I think he still does. He would, of course, he would uh, oh, because man. of this. But his settlement was undisclosed. Yeah, it was undisclosed. But I bet you he probably makes a killing just by being the co-founder of Facebook. Like you would think that he would be entitled to a certain percentage of shares or finances just for that. I'm surprised they didn't give him back his 30 percent. If like unless it was, and it just wasn't disclosed. Right. But that's what he would be owed, right? Yeah. And that was that. That was the other whole thing about about his half of the case was by diluting it. Well, you heard. Uh, what the the sean guy say you know he was like you're essentially making it that i'm not part of this company anymore and he's like you're not yeah that's what they were doing by taking by taking his shares from 30 to like 0 0.3 or 0 0.03 or whatever it was was that that essentially meant that if some like like if steve had gone from the street and bought one share he would own more of the company than the co-founder did why didn't I? <laughs> okay. um, I could buy one share. Very little. And then didn't they also take his board seat away too? Oh yeah, they did everything. Him. Everything yeah. to him. He he's a great he like Andrew Garfield is so great in this film. Um Okay, so here okay, here's a question for you all. Does this film have a hero? No. no, I don't think so. Actually, not a not in a traditional sense. What do you mean? I guess you could say it's Mark Zuckerberg, like the same way Roy Kroc and the founder was a hero. So I wouldn't say he's a hero. I'd say he's a protagonist. I think that's a. I think they're different. I guess it's what. Well, what's your definition of a hero, though? I asked you first. <laughs> okay. Well, when I think of hero, I think someone like typical good. I don't know, Superman minus the powers. Uh, but I don't know. He's obviously like I would say he's evil and a villain to everyone around him, and he only cares about himself, really. Um, I don't know. Here's a question. Did you guys root for him? That, that, that was, sorry, something that I was going to bring up with Steve's question is the fact that hero for me in terms of like a not superhero movie where it's just like an actual hero, but like a hero in other movies are the person that you are rooting for and the person that you hope is going to come out on top. And for me, it was not Mark. If anything, I would say that the hero or the person that I was rooting for was his friend throughout the entire thing. Yeah, that's true. I, I could see that, definitely. And he was really trying to help the company succeed in its own way. But he just kept getting screwed over. He had to pay for everything, too. He was the seed investor. And you did want him to like actually win like the, the court case. And then actually get some advertising and like not get screwed over by Mark too. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of with uh, I'm I'm with Riley on this one. I would say that the film obvious. I don't think Zuckerberg's a hero. Uh, I do think Eduardo might be, but this is one of those rare times where the hero gets squashed. At the end, like heroism in this one is not I'm going to save the day, but it may be the guy who's fighting with integrity. Um, but that's actually in a strange way. What I like about the film is the incredible like toxicity of of it. Like I, I feel like uh, it's not like I'm like, yay, toxicity. That's not what I mean. But I mean, like, <laughs> no. 
But the fact that you have this guy like Eduardo, who's just trying to, he's just trying to do the right thing and be, do right by his friend. But, but the world is so brutal. Um, that for everybody else, it's just, it, it's just like stepping on one another. Um, it's, it, it makes me, it, it, it's frustrating. And no, I don't, I, I'm not pulling for Zuckerberg to succeed in the traditional sense. Like, obviously you want to see them be a success, but at the same time, like the way he cuts people down, um, but I, I just find it very, very interesting and almost, almost complex. Well, not almost complex, but very realistic. But I don't know. I think I was rooting for Anne Perkins. <laughs> She's the hero. Yes. Anne Perkins. Um, this cast i i didn't even realize dakota johnson was in this movie i'm like holy crap like everybody's in this movie um so, uh, let me ask you all this though the film's conversations about social networking um how did you feel about it do you feel like it's irrelevant now it's it's not applicable anymore? Do you feel like it's changed? I, I just wondering what you think about that. Like I said, this was a moment in time film. When this came out, it was like, mm. boom, this is where we are. The next best thing, right? Like the next big thing we had, well, the generation before us had um, like all these other little sites like Friendster and everything, which I didn't realize was a thing because I'm so young, um, <laughs> but it was really the first big thing that came out for social networking, and it took off, and yeah, it did, of course, it made a big difference, and it made a huge deal, there was a huge deal, and everybody who's, everybody was on it, but I feel like it's fading out now, like, in the sense that there's so much social networking now, and there's so many different ways to use it, like I know for my students back in the day, it was so big when you had your like Facebook, you know, set up and established and all of that stuff. But now my kids are like, no one has Facebook that's under 40. Like none of my students use Facebook at all. Um, everyone's on all the other social media sites and now even like gaming streams and discord and all of that like that's the big thing now it's not facebook and honestly like i even rarely go on it anymore it's like it's fading out oh, well, but it was the next big thing what were you gonna say jason sorry I, uh, I, was just saying, I was just confirming yeah it's really i mean when i go on it it's really for old people now and now tiktok is the big thing like that's the hip gen v thing and then there's probably going to be more as we continue. And and then even like we had Vine, we had uh, Visco. It's, yeah, it's a whole lot. But you know what? I think I had ICQ. I missed out on MySpace era, era. I don't, never had one or was cool enough for one. But yeah, like even the big thing for the grade eights right now is Discord. Everybody's got their Discord and you have to exchange Discord tags and names. I'm like, yeah. I think I think as much as I agree that you're that you're right uh, in the fact that like uh, it's it's constantly shifting. And it's always the new thing. I think the inherent sort of stuff that they brought up about social networking and how they worked the site specifically to make sure that people wanted to come back and wanted to keep using it. The whole. Um, what was the word uh, exclusivity of it? Mm -hmm. I think that hasn't changed because if you look at the the if you look still at Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat or any of these new things, it's the same thing where it's you can go and you can see your friends and you can see how what they're up to and you can see someone's status, you can see somewhat uh, what they're uh, like what they're doing, what 
where they're going. You, it, you know, you meet someone for the first time, you ask them for their IG, you ask them for your snaps so that you can stay in contact with them, see what they're up to, see, you know, if you meet someone at the bar, you can ask for their Snapchat, you can see if they're dating someone, you can see if they're single, like the, the inherent social networking part of it that keeps people coming back and keeps the social, social network and social media part of it, I think hasn't changed, which is kind of interesting because with all of the stuff that has changed, even with TikTok, if you look at how different in terms of an actual application or site it is, like TikTok and Facebook are so vastly different. But the inherent way that they work in keeping people there is the exact same. Engagement. Yeah. And you can create, you can like curate your own personality and who you are on these social networking sites. So it makes it addictive, right? You can do exactly what they were doing at the beginning with Facebook. Like you can basically create your persona and who you are and who you want the world to know you as on these social me media sites. Yeah, I think, I think that uh, social network hits on two key things. One is everybody wants to be connected. I don't think that's changed from when Kat and I were kids, like, and we had to use this, you know, when you use cell phone, when you use telephones to call people, um, yeah. you know, um, pagers. The, the day of pagers, the pre pagers. Um, I was too young to have a pager. Yeah, I never oh, had hands on a string. <laughs> yes. But I mean, like, back in the back in the days pre internet pre so like just i think that it, this film really touches on the fact that what hasn't changed is we all still want to be connected we now have more intense ways to do it i also think that it touches on the fact that people are going to try and use that against us and and that's one of the things that i think is so fascinating about this film is that like like you said riley when in this particular film um the way that or the 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 networks are have changed totally but the way that they're being consumed and used i don't think it is and i think it's because we all want to be connected and we just aren't sure how to do it sorry um we aren't sure how to do it well, I should say that. Why are we not sure how to do it well? We did it well before Facebook was around. Has it not just isolated our socialization more to have these social media sites? Before you had to go out, you had to talk to people, you had to go and introduce yourself to someone before giving in your resume and make sure you had a firm handshake and look people in the eyes. Now you don't have to do any of that. In fact, you're not even encouraged to do it. I remember going in and applying for a job and they were like, it's so great, nice of you to come in, nice to meet you. Just uh, fill out the online thing at home. Yeah. So. I, it, it's, it's, it's double-edged because it, like what, what Steve said is, is inherently true in the fact that it's, it's driven by a desire to, to connect, but even if you look at like the past few years over isolation and how, you know, s people will say that, you know, social media has kept us connected over that time. But I know looking at, at m like my friend group over the last two years, it has gone from like this right down, right? Mm -hmm. As much as, as much as like, yeah, I still follow them. I'm still like, I still have them on the social media. Like it's, it, it makes people so addicted to the instant stimuli and that in, instant sort of gratification that they get that when it goes without that th all types of being able to try and keep that other type of social engagement alive, it just goes out the window. Yeah, you're basically forced to be social in the way that Mark Zuckerberg was social. He didn't really care about all these people, but 
he had to have the likes he had to have the he had to have all of this gratification and it's like I feel like in one way yes social media has helped a lot and we've done a lot but in most of the ways social media has just degraded society and now it's just all for that adrenaline for the likes for the like you're following people who you wouldn't even talk to except when Facebook reminds you it's their birthday you know those aren't friendships those aren't social you're just trying to keep up with the joneses even now i would delete facebook today if i could but i have connections through other friends that are in different parts of the country and it's really my only way to communicate with them unless i get off my butt and i try to actually make an effort mm-hmm. well i know <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is right that's that hook that gets you in and that keeps you there it's like I can maintain these friendships and this social standing and keep an eye on everyone so that I know what everyone's doing compared to what I'm doing and I think I think it actually just ruins society to be honest no one's going outside even now I mean this is great we can zoom this isn't a social media platform but you don't have to go anywhere to still have, think that you have all these friends. Yeah, and even if you look at, I, I know you were talking earlier, so, sort of connecting two points that you said, you were talking earlier about the, the sort of streaming part of, of social media. And if you look at sort of the, the, the dehumanization of that, that, that social media has brought, um, like, Granted, I it, granted I, this is coming from a point of view of someone who is not an influencer in before the age of social media or current. But like, if you it, like before, it, people would have you know those those like meet and greets. They would have like you know if you were an author, you would have the book talks. If you had um, if you were a singer, you would have like the the after show sort of meet and greet and stuff, right? And now there have been so many like streamers and, you know, TikTok stars and stuff that have like publicly come out and said, like, I don't want to lie to you guys, but I think of you guys as numbers, right? Like it's it's taken away that sort of human interaction part of it to the point that that people don't even realize that it's actually humans that are following them they just sort of see them as numbers and potential likes so is it a way to make money yeah is it really social at that point what about only fans that's super social (laughs) that is super social and very personal (laughs) it is Hmm, interesting good point (laughs) social media is good (laughs) (laughs) Everyone gets an OnlyFans page. You hear it? You heard it here. <clears throat> Put it in the quote book. It's recording, so <laughs> I think it's funny, just like how antisocial Mark Zuckerberg was. Like he saw people, just like what you said about those streamers and stuff. It's like he saw them as numbers. He saw them as a means to an end and and, and an answer to an equation. And it's kind of turned us into narcissistic, like, people, like, why do I have so many people on Facebook? Oh, to make sure that I'm still, like, keeping up, and nine times out of ten, I'm not, so I just feel like garbage, but now we're all just a bunch of Mark Zuckerberg staring at a screen. I hate that guy. (laughs) Everyone needs to get an OnlyFans. We're moving off of Facebook and onto that because it's more personal and more specific well this is a great time to announce screen fishes only fans which yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's Daniel just terrible Taylor. stills from our <laughs> from our screenshot that's right that's right um we're you, all narcissistic people who don't know how to be social anymore thanks to mark zuckerberg end of podcast Thanks for coming out to Screenfish. This, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this. What about the film too? Is this this is why I ask you what you what you all think too? Because this film was made by an essentially forty year old man, uh, 
about the lives of no, twenty year old kids. Tell that by the writing. Uh, well, this is exactly what I'm saying. So, I mean, this is this is uh, you know, well, Aaron Sorkin may may have been older than that when this was written, but um, you you've got a very clear perspectives on social networking from the outside. Um, you know, this like this was not written from the perspective of somebody who was involved in it or like loves it. This was written uh, as as a a terrifying tale of business gone mad uh, that inv happened to involve millennials. Um, that's why I said to you before, I said, this reminds me so much of Citizen Kane, um, not for its groundbreaking nature. Citizen Kane is still, I still think it's the best film ever made. But the themes and ideas are not that different, even down to the fact that the, the rosebud at the end of Citizen Kane as very much, you know, this idea of something lost uh, and what am I missing out on um, is, is I think, very, very interesting. And I, I think back to one quote. It was uh, Reitman, Jason Reitman. Uh, he was at TIFF. This was not, not in a film that he made or anything. He was doing a Q&A. And he had a movie called Men, Women, and Children. And it was all about sexuality and the internet. Um, and I'll never forget what he said. He One of the things he said, and this was maybe five, six years ago, uh, that the internet is like we've been given the keys to a Lamborghini when all we've ever driven is Model T Fords. He said, I think it's going to be Ooh. years. It was, yeah, because what he's saying, and then he says, it's going to be years for us to truly understand what we have in our possession. And right now we're just wielding it like we don't know what we're doing with it. And we don't know what we're doing with it. And I, I see that in a film like I feel like we still are. Yeah. Like, was this movie a good movie? Where's the were the actors good? Yes, the actors were good, some more than others. The movie was reasonable, and it was a foreshadowing of the much much worse stuff that's to come out of this social media insanity. And Mark Zuckerberg, to be fair, but and and yet it all comes down to wanting to be connected. Even even Zuckerberg at the end, and I know we can debate this about whether or not. You know whether he has a soul or not <laughs> but but him at the end clicking refresh 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 i still feel that no it doesn't show that he's a likable guy i think it shows he's human and i think he it shows that he just as, as reprehensible as he as he treats that young woman um he still wants to be connected to her or he just wants to get his way Mm -hmm. It could be that too. It could be that too. But is that not social media? Are we not all refreshing on things that we want to see pop up and pining for things like your high school pictures or no. all of that kind of stuff that you see? Not you. Oh, I'm not pining pictures. for my high school pictures. There are some of them. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're looking for something better on social media. You're always looking for something better. And for him refreshing this person's page, like the cynical that he was, was just him wanting something better. It was something he wanted that he couldn't have, which is basically all of social media right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's narcissistic on yeah. everybody's, on everybody's spectrum, right? Like you have a great, you have a, maybe you have a really crappy life but you're clicking on these pictures of people that seem to have the perfect life or are the perfect girl or are the perfect everything. And you're comparing yourself constantly, but maybe everyone's just clicking on everybody else's photos and we're going to just burn into the sun one day, just refreshing. I, I it's <laughs> funny. Social you know, media. I, uh, I have found myself and I, I mean, I'm over 40, so I still use Facebook. Um, but, uh, like friends of mine who are, who are parents showing them doing these incredible things with their kids, going on these amazing trips. And mm -hmm. I'm all of a sudden feel like a deadbeat dad, uh, because, and I'm like, wait a second, wait a second, this isn't supposed to work this way, right? Like, how am I, how, how is this happening? 
you know, this is just a friend of mine saying, look what I did with my kids. But there's this really interesting relationship that like when we reduce people to an image, what are we doing? And, and even the fact that this, this rating, uh, what was it? Not Friendster. Uh, the one that he, face Hot or not? No, fa well, oh, face, was, face mash when it was essentially hot or not. All he's done is he's, you know, no pun intended, stripped down these young women into just a picture. Mm -hmm. He's like, who's better that one or this one. And, and I love the fact that this is going on and going viral and you see the reaction of the people as their pictures coming up because these guys are voting on a picture, but there's very real people associated with it and complicated lives and all, all of these things. And, and, oh man, I just think it's such a fascinating, fascinating look at the world. And that also speaks to how, how easy it is to create sort of what Kat was talking about earlier with creating that persona that you want to portray on the internet of the fact that if you look inherently at what a photo is, it's just one moment. Right. Yeah. So obviously, you know, people I, I know I do it. I know a lot of other people do it. You know, they're going to post a picture on IG. They take like 700 and they pick the best one. Right. So you're looking and comparing yourself to someone else at a moment in time. Like I, I'll be scrolling through Instagram at, you know, 3 a.m. with a half eaten bag of Doritos sitting on my chest. Right. And I'm looking at these people living their perfect lives and I'm looking down at this half eaten bag of Doritos and I'm like, God, I am a loser. Right. But like that is their one moment in time that they decided to portray. Filtered and adjusted and edited to perfection. Exactly. Exactly. I really think this film is actually that's the, the reason I wanted you all to see it. It's because I really think it, it, like I said, moment in time, it's a, uh, it is a fascinating look and at, well, I would say at our culture now, but it really is our culture. Our demise, our upcoming demise. Our demise. Hey, it's not, this is the end. All right. That's right. Um, so no, I don't, I don't know what Zuckerberg is like in real life. I, I, I know the decisions he's made the last 10 years are reprehensible. Same he made 20 years ago. <laughs> well, this is Jesse Eisenberg. It's not actually Zuckerberg, but I mean, um, but yeah, I mean, this was like, this is exactly the sort of, um, the, exactly the reason why I thought it was so important that we just we discuss it together and why I wanted to show it to you. And just to sort of praise praise the movie again in terms of in terms of how Zuckerberg was portrayed, I, I kind of feel the same way about this as I felt um, about Evan Hansen in Dear Evan Hansen. If you remember back to our talk about that, I said that I loved that movie and that musical and how it was written because I hated him so much. <laughs> because that just shows how well it was written and how well the person was portrayed, right? And Evan Hansen, I hated him because of how well it was written about the stuff that he did. And in this, I, you know, I came into this not liking this guy, but, th but even if I were to come into this from a fresh perspective, like I had just walked out of like a spaceship and have never heard of Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook, which I'm sure they did because he's a lizard or whatever, but you know, hypothetically, <laughs> I like, and I walked into this and this was like the first thing that I did for whatever reason, I decided to sit down and watch the social network. Um, I think I still would have had the same outcome of, you know, after that first scene, not really liking him and not liking him through the entire thing. And I think that shows to how well it was written because if it was written badly, I feel like there could be so many mix, misconstrued feelings about this guy. But even if you look at like our chat over the course of the movie, we were all kind of in agreement that he was a dick from start to end, did not change. He's consistent. Yeah. Well, th that, that begs the question, Rai, uh, who would win? Mark Zuckerberg or Evan Hansen? 
Who's who's worse? <laughs> hmm. Dr. Bird, because he's an actual real person. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Facebook the musical. I think <laughs> oh my God. Well, you kind of did with Evan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see uh, Jesse Eisenberg break into a song called Download Me. And <laughs> <then we're> gonna... <laughs> or, or, or singing. Uh, the police is I'll be watching you. Maybe that that's that would be more appropriate. Probably watching us right now. We all have Facebook on our computers. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey Zuckerberg, you suck. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go back on Facebook and all of our accounts are gonna be taken down. <laughs> we're gonna have targeted ads all just saying why Zuckerberg's trial was faked. Why they yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that all our listeners can subscribe to us on Podomatic and YouTube, which are no, <laughs> like and subscribe. Or what? Does he not own one of those? Things? He probably does. Well, Facebook. Sorry, intro. no, go. What's that? Apparently, Facebook owns over eighty percent of all social media traffic. Yeah, it does. Well, there are. I would argue that's a monopoly, but. It yeah. is a hundred percent. Oh well, Google owns YouTube, so <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to bring that up. Isn't that nuts? They it's they have crazy. so much control. Yeah, man. Well, I'll just make my own social network. <laughs> <laughs> Blackjack. Yeah. I didn't know. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook chat, Instagram, WhatsApp, and even Oculus are owned by Facebook. And uh, did you say Snapchat? No. Snapchat is. I don't think they own Snapchat. Apparently, they bought uh, Snapchat. What? No, no. Apparently, Zuckerberg tried to make an offer. He lowballed yeah. it, and he was also a huge jerk to the CEO. And they were no. like, <laughs> and they were like, okay, you know what? We're not selling to this guy. And thank God they didn't, because they're worth a lot more than his initial offer. Snapchat? Yeah, because they're they're owned by Snap Inc. Is Snap and they have Snapchat, Snapchat Spectacles, Bitmoji, and Zenly. Is Snapchat still a thing? Like, do people do yeah. Snapchat? With the young people, it, it really is. Yeah. I had it for a hot minute. Because that the, the, the draw about Snapchat is it brings the connection without the... the, 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 the Longevity. Yeah. The commitment. Like, yeah. Or commitment for young people. Everything, everything disappears after 24 hours or so they say. No, it doesn't. Unless, unless someone screenshots it or saves it, in which case you are notified that they do that, right? So, I think they solved a murder once going through the Snapchat, and like they could get, they could retrieve the files somehow. I don't know. Definitely saved. They still haven't caught me, so no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they were subscribed to your OnlyFans. That's why. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Poor Eduardo. He was the real sad person of this movie. He worked his little butt off for that company. And for what? He made all the sacrifices. He didn't make all the sacrifices. Did he? <laughs> he just he, gave money. He gave money. He gave all of his contacts. He worked around looking for ads flyers. And this he took an internship. Yeah. Went on the first day. And didn't do anything for Facebook. <laughs> he was looking for ad people. I like Eduardo. What, by what? Standing on a balcony and just looking? Oh, well, I'm looking for ad people. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> but he was the co-founder. As he stares out the window. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking for ad space. 
<laughs> that cloud over there looks perfect. Who was the one that had the original idea? Now what's on Facebook? Ads. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like most of their revenue, actually. Yeah. I would like to say, uh, what, like, some of Eduardo's lines in the movie were some of my favorite, I think. Like, especially in the, they were one of the more final scenes when they were in the, um, the the court, uh, like in the lawsuit, and he he like he turned around and just kind of looked like Mark in the face and was like, "I was your only friend," mm -hmm. right? And just sort of being like, "Are you so soulless that you would do this to the person who helped you create and become what you are?" And the person who was there for you then tried to stop you from doing face mash and tried to get you out of that. And like you said, gave him all that money. Like, I don't know, it was really powerful. Didn't he give him the code to the equation to do yes, face mash? Yes, he did. Which he had created for an entirely innocent thing for a yes. chess tournament. Like what a nerd, first of all, but like. <laughs> Could even hold on to the one friend he had. Well, here's a question: Were they friends? Do you consider them friends? Before we, I think in his narcissism and his like sociopathy that he could he saw him as a friend, in that he did things for him and garnered him like met his needs. I you know think... that one out of every hundred men is a sociopath. Yeah. And almost all have sociopathic tendencies, but that's where our billionaires are, right? They're sociopaths. That's how they're able to get to the top. Just like Mark Zuckerberg. The friend thing, I think Eduardo definitely did. And I think in some way, like granted, I don't think, and, and Steve, I think you brought this up as well. I don't think Mark could really understand really the sort of, IRL or in-person social sort of interactions, but I think in some way he did think of him as a friend as well. Um, even if you look at when they had brought up the um, the the animal cruelty plan, um, like he had turned around and been like, wow, like really Mark, like you told them about this? And they were like, no, we found it. And when we brought it up, Mark defended you about that right so he i think didn't there was, use it. yeah i think there was still some part of bark that still saw him as some form of friend but who cares I'd, I'd almost like to see a movie or documentary or something about maybe like his childhood because obviously like he wasn't taught you know, kind of societal know. norms or normal. yeah, something like that. Because I know there was a lot of talk like after this movie came out and even just again in recent years, like, um, you know, is Mark Zuckerberg on the like autism spectrum? Um, just was like some of the ways that he acted and just behavioral tendencies. Um, I know like I had seen, I think this was on like TikTok, uh, Instagram, uh, people who, are on the autism spectrum like they're like yeah like this is very similar to you know stuff that I do or stuff that I know like other people do mm -hmm. so it's like you know is it all his fault the way that he acts or you know kind of treats people or is it just because he wasn't taught how to properly engage with people or is it just he literally doesn't know how because that's not how his brain functions It's a great point. Elon Musk came out with, uh, you know, recently talking about is, is it Asperger's? Does he have Asperger's? Uh, uh, I think Elon I Musk. don't know. Uh, when he hosted Saturday Night Live uh, last year, I remember that 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 was something he brought up in his monologue, and people were like, "What?" Um, you might you know, have we, a. You might have high functioning where you don't like, like I know Asperger's, you can have like tics and stuff. And like you just say things. 
Um, but yeah, he it was Asperger's. He said he had. Yeah. Mm. If we found out that he was on the autism spectrum, would it change the way you feel about him in this movie? No, because he still knew what he was doing was wrong. Like diluting his shares, uh, and then just like taking the company from the twins too. Like he knew for six weeks yeah. that he was leading them on. And I think there's also the the effort part of it. Right. And the fact that like throughout the entire movie, I don't think we ever once saw him try and make an effort to change how he was acting with people. He had obviously he he obviously knew that he was hurting people by what he said. We saw that in the first in the first scene, even if he didn't realize why he was like, oh, I just stated a fact. But if that, you know, right. So obviously he knew what he was doing was hurting people, but he didn't make an effort at all so you know i i would say too going back to the friend question i think that he and eduardo really are friends and i don't think he understands what it means to be one or at least didn't have the strength of character to take any more steps like i, I like the scene where he defends where the lawyer says he defended him uh, and he's and and Eduardo is just so ready to think he's he's cut him off. But there's there's this is what I mean. I I really think that there is something underneath him that wants to to have friends and have relationships, but he just he doesn't know what to do. I still don't think he cares about the money. I no, but people like him don't. They want the notoriety. That's fair. That's fair. And I think that was evident in the film. I think it started that way, but like he definitely cares about it now. Mm -hmm. All the ads and everything, everything he's done. He's built a charity just to avoid taxes. Mm -hmm. Unless he wants to do some charity. Like, let's be careful. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just a holding company. Oh. It's the same way Bill Gates has one. Um, I did find that Bill Gates scene very funny with the guys standing outside. <laughs> <laughs> and his friend just turning to him and he was like, are you actually brain dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note to you all, I think maybe this is a way that we can wrap this up uh, each week. We know how I feel about the film. But for each of you, is this a movie worth missing? I wouldn't miss it. It, it needs to be seen how evil he was. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> you make him sound like the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> of the internet. Wow. <laughs> no, I wouldn't miss it. I mean, it's a huge company. It was the first, I guess, it was the first proper social media organization. And then even now it's like gone so big. So I think it's something definitely you have to see. It's like watching a movie on Apple, I guess. Like it's just such a big organization. and such an interesting story to see unfold. So I wouldn't miss it, it's good. I don't think I would miss it either. Um for the for the sake of what it's about um for the sake of the 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 discussion that you can have about social media afterwards and also i feel like it's just one of those movies that like i i, I feel like th this is once again going to be a very strange comparison but steve i think sort of how you kind of describe sometimes to people who haven't seen like star wars it's just like one of those movies that like it's like i don't really care if you end up liking it or not but you gotta watch it like just for the sake of like that like you were saying that that moment in time kind of piece right like you just like you gotta see it daniel cat what about you um i'm kind of on the other end i think it's one you could miss i mean 
like again the the acting was great but like you can see all of these other actors in other movies doing the same you know sort of performance if not better um and like if you really want to know about you know this you can easily just do like a quick google search and read about an article about this these lawsuits and whatever i don't think it's really a must see that's fair i like the fact that you said you can see all of these actors in other films so rather than seeing one movie you can see nine yeah <laughs> <laughs> on my only fans that's on your that's right <laughs> cat what about you um, I think that I would be on the same, um, the same end as Daniel. I was thinking about it and I was like, well, if you don't know anything about Facebook and your imminent demise in the social media or quagmire of horrible in this, um, then watch it. Like it was done well, blah, blah, blah. But then I was like, really though? Because there's literally a documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. And if you want to know like an actual documentary on Netflix, I mean, on uh, Facebook and what it's done and what Mark Zuckerberg has done, that's a great way to watch it because it's an actual documentary. This is, it's fine, but I don't think if you want to learn about social media and net and not Netflix and uh, like Facebook and all of that, watch a documentary. This is is good, but it's fluff. If you want to know what you want to know, and you can literally look anywhere. And I suggest watching the Social Dilemma on Netflix. Really good. Not sponsored. Not sponsored by Netflix. <laughs> That's fair. Which do you know that? Blockbuster had an opportunity to buy Netflix yep. for a stupidly low amount of money. And then it just, like... anyways, but yeah, watch The Social Dilemma if you haven't, because that really talks about everything that we're talking about here without like the Hollywoodization of this person. And it, the ending's still the same. You'll hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really the, the ultimate goal. I mean, as long as you come out hating the guy at the end, I mean, it's a win, right? And if you don't hate him, you need to question why. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I felt inspired watching this film. <laughs> I'm sure you would. So thank you to you all for, for listening. We will be back next week where we get to see Jason's pick. I can't wait to, can't wait to see what that is. And uh, you can follow us on all the socials, on YouTube, Instagram, YouTube. Um, Facebook and uh, and Twitter, ironically, as we have this conversation. But I thank you all for being a part of this again. And thank you for watching. And remember, it's not about the movies you miss. It's about the movies that matter. Peace.